we have to create the right vibe, you know, the energy and everybody at the organization has to feel so privileged to be here. It's, it's no other way. Thanks for listening to the Purely Arsenal podcast. Please follow us on Twitter at Purely Arsenal FP for all the latest Arsenal podcasts. Welcome to another post-match edition of a Purely Arsenal podcast. It's early Monday morning in the UK, but we are absolutely delighted. Neil Shaw with me. How are you doing, Neil? I'm good, mate. I'm good. It's all systems go. Everything go for the quad. I've got, we got your early morning iced coffee there. What is it? It's water. And no, it's is it? Quad, oh, I thought there was something else in there, to be honest. I thought it was no, in no, no. Water's good. Water's good. Refreshing, yeah. Of course, we've got James Johnson with me looking fresh early this morning. Yes, morning, morning. I um, haven't had my shower, but yeah, I'm as fresh as I can be. So, yeah. I just I just had a shower. I feel very fresh. Very fresh. <laughs> the old Arsenal shirt I'm representing. Doc. Boys, 2006. Neil had to ask me the year and I had to double check it because I was like, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was 09 or 2012. It can't have been that long. 2006 was our last win there. Adebayo, won't talk about him, was a goal scorer. A late goal, I think it was. It was um, a similar affair in 1-0, you know. Um, but 14 years, but then 30 games, I think it's been since 2015 against the top six since we last won away. Um, no matter what happened in a game like this, winning it is just going to bring out a ton of positives because it's been, it's a monkey off our back, if you like. It's been something that we've been thinking about for, for a long time. I said collectively, I think the club's got a sort of mental block when it comes to some of these games. And um, I think maybe we'll go into that as uh, the way we sort of went in the last 15 to 20 minutes. But we start as we always do with the lineup, which means eradicating Neil for three or four minutes. Um, James, there were some surprises in the lineup for sure, no matter what, which way you thought the lineup was going to go. What were the surprises for you? And um, how did you see the sort of the setup once the game started? Yeah, like we always say, the lineup, um, when that goes up about an hour before, that's always the best time to gauge the timeline and everything else. And do you know what? When, when it initially come out, First and foremost, I didn't know that Rob Holding was fit. So I was like, okay, well, that's a bit. He's throwing him in the deep end there. But at the same time, do you know what? I'm like, no, I, I like Rob Holding. So that's, you know, I've got no problem with him being in there. So I was I was happy with that. Um, El Nenny next to party was another one where pe initially people were like, oh, what, El Nenny, really? But um, from what Neil said a couple of days ago. And after watching that Vienna game, I was like, no, do you know what? Them two played really well together. So I've got no, I had no real qualms about that. And then the other one that really sort of made me stick my head out was uh, obviously Willian, because we all said it all week that that left-hand side to them is a complete and utter weakness. And it was just like, you've got to get someone running at Luke Shaw. You've got to get someone running at Maguire because on that left side, they're vulnerable. And um, do you know what? For for all of Willian's faults, per se, um, he really grew into that game. And if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have won it. So do you know what? I, I think, you know, a lot's been said about the manager the last couple of weeks, even from myself. And um, yesterday, he got his completely spot on. And Oli Goli Solskjaer got his completely wrong. If you look at it, I think he's had 48 games at Arsenal. And we can somewhat see what Mikel Arteta is trying to do with this group and trying to do with his team. And he's won the trophies with it. Solskjaer's had 100 games. I don't know what Man United's identity is. I haven't got a clue. And I'm not saying that because I'm an Arsenal fan and we beat him and everything. I'm like, just as a neutral... I would look at Man United compared to the 20 year dominance that Man United had from when I was a child and everything else. I'm looking at them now going, well, what, what kind of side are you? Because you're a mess. <laughs> like, like, I know people were going, oh, Arsenal was a state. Arsenal. I'm like, no, you, you're a bloody mess and you, you need to sort it out quickly. And no, I, I mean, um, you talk about the centre backs, Gabriel and holding together. I, I think they're the best partnership. And also, um, Holding gets booked on the 25th minute. Gabriel gets booked on the 27th minute. So for nearly, you know, an hour and a quarter, both our centre-backs are on bookings and look at both of them. People go, oh, Gabriel was lucky. Jog on, jog on. I'm, I'm like, that guy is so composed 
knows what he's doing. And he was absolute class. Bellerin and Tierney in the first half, I don't think they could have whipped any more balls in to try and get us goals. They were brilliant. Um, Saka, we don't need to talk about him. He's class every single time. And then Willian, like I said, he grew into the game at the start when we're trying to transition and he was giving it away and everything. You're just like, oh, Willian, please, mate, please. Because I'm I, like I kept saying on the WhatsApp, I'm like, I want this guy to have a good game because I'm sick and tired of sort of, you know, constantly having a go at him. And then Lacassette, um, people were saying about him and yeah, okay, maybe in front of goal and everything, he weren't the best, but he worked bloody hard yesterday and he won that ball high up as well. He, he's tackling and just on that, when we were somewhat pressing, was really, really good. And then Abamyang, um, in terms of getting in front of goal, quiet game, but he worked his he worked his socks off as well. So yeah, in terms of the lineup and everything else, I think to a man, everybody did did the job on the day. So yeah, I've got no complaints whatsoever when you're looking at it like that. No. Yeah, and you went through individuals there, and it's it's so easy to touch on sort of seven or eight of them really, and we will go back to it as well. But just um, it, we really need we had you know three wins, three three losses. Um, Neil and it, we were at a point where we were questioning Arteta in certain ways after last week's loss at home to Leicester and it was a massive game for us not just because it was a big away game once again but also because of um, you know our recent sort of you know losses in the league and we, we dropped down some points and we knew we were playing catch up a little bit we knew we'd had a hard run but um, you've got to get points from some of these games if you're going to if you're going to um, compete for the top four and um, I think I think James touched on it there um, the Rob Holding thing was really really a surprise for me as well. I thought it was brilliant how we kept it under wraps for start. I thought it was fantastic. But it's also amazing to think that um, he's taken the place of Mustafi. And I don't think it's a fitness-based thing, really. When about three months ago, just leading into the cup final, um, we were all, in fairness, going, oh, Mustafi isn't there for Arteta. You know, he's been one of Arteta's. And, and we knew that the reluctance wasn't really so much from us as fans. It was more from Mikel Arteta as a, a manager to put Rob Holding in if Mustafi was fit. So that U-turn from Rob Holding, um, for, you know, in the manager where he's so close to being loaned out was amazing as well. But, Neil, in terms of the game overall, just give me your overall summary. I, I do really think mentally beyond what we saw, which is – really opened our eyes to maybe some some ways this team might be able to play and use players that maybe we didn't even think were part of the first 11. Um, but I also, also think mentally, mentally and collectively, because it's been so long as a group, you know, no matter who's in that group, um, I think it could be a really big thing for the, for the rest of the Premier League season, Neil. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Professor, can you hear me? Yes, you're perfect. Okay. Um, massive, massive on... on every scale really, um, to get that mental uh, block out of the system and to push on from there is uh, imperative if we want to succeed at any level, uh, to be fair. I mean, ultimately our goal is to, to be consistent in the premiership, is to be challenging, is to be top four and then move on from there and push on from there to conquer Europe or at least do well in Europe. And you're not going to be able to do that if you can't beat the top top six six, six teams just not going to be able to do it so to to come along and 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 break that block is huge um we've kind of been getting there with Arteta's style um I mean a lot of people called it progress I wasn't too keen on that but you know making mitigating the loss the large losses into one nil defeats recently it's kind of suggesting that defensively we're getting there um, and then yesterday or today for you, Jack, I'm not quite sure how your timing is, but, you know, it, it proved proved a, a, a result and a gain for us and that we turned that not only into a draw, but into a narrow win. Um, and don't care if it was 1-0 or 6-0, three points is three points. Uh, for me, for me, hold, just touching on holding, um, fantastic. I've always liked him. Do you remember I say I, I find him as a, a very old school kind of defender, um, he kind of, for me, is in the Tony Adams kind of mould, that kind of old school defender. Uh, it does, doesn't mess about. He can get into a, a, a one-to-one battle very, very well. And I think he's useful. I think, I think he really is a, a very good and competent player. And for me, uh, James, uh, I was going to say what you touched on about the, the early yellow cards. And for t- to be able to push on from there for both of those players... You know, that was frightening to get them that early. You then think that they're going to, you know, kind of hold back in their tackling. 
if anything, they were like every player actually, especially in the first class, uh, first first half, were very very aggressive. I thought. Um, you know, we've seen uh, uh, our, pl- our players maybe be a little bit too cautious recently. Um, I thought that the the style was very, very much more on the front foot, very aggressive, very attacking uh, on all all parts of the pitch. And the only mistake that I think I can remember from either of the two centre backs was when Holdings' header went a bit awry, and Rashford could have had a go, but it touched his arm, and it was given given handball. But apart from that, you know, it was almost sort of like a flawless display from everyone on the pitch. And I know I don't really talk about formations, but we essentially had a midfield of two players uh, against their four when they were in the diamond, was it? You know, and that's amazing that 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 we were closing doors all over the pitch. For, you know, they, we weren't allowing any passages of play anywhere um, on the pitch for them, whether it be in a defensive mould or from the midfield. Um, and I thought uh, everyone was was up 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 to the task. I thought El Nenian part, uh, party's partnership was amazing. I'm sure we're going to talk about those two uh, more in the pod. But I just felt that the game was a massive result. It was so much so needed, and it just can, from there. I've always said uh, uh, confidence is infectious. And as a result of this huge win, I think we're going to really push on. And it's also given not only the players belief, I've always said it, it's not just about giving the players self-belief, it gives the manager in his tactics and his vision and the way he wants to play belief as well. So huge, Jack. Can't can't knock it. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. And just touching on like Neil did um, there, James Arteta, and what, how he set us up. And we, we criticised him last week for um, some of the changes in the second half against Leicester and also some of the, the ways we set up, you know, playing the, the midfield three, if you like, very similar um, in, a, in, a, in a home game like that. Um, I thought, personally, the way he set up this, this game was absolutely perfect. And if uh, we touch on the centre of center midfield, but you can touch on the whole game, really. But um, I think when I looked at it, and I didn't like the El Nenny party, because I remember tweeting Neil going, I'm, I'm not sure about it. But then when I watched the game, and now I'm re-watching it, I think it was really intelligent, because what man you have in Pogba and Fernandez, if we just look at them, are very creative, quite skillful players. But what they neither of them have, really, I don't believe, is great recovery speed or the willingness to recover and great just athleticism generally. And what he basically did was, out of our whole squad, I think, he picked the three players that are the most athletic, right? Whether they're the best or not, a party is, is everything. And we'll get to that. But part, it's so athletic. El Nini, 91st minute, says it all. Saka, so athletic, right? And he just put those, even though Saka was, you know, in a hybrid sort of position. And he just said, I'm going to outrun you. And I, I just thought that was so clever. It was it was what Liverpool generally do to every team in a way. He just said, "I'm gonna out. I'm just gonna keep running and outrun you." And that's pretty much I felt what we were doing in the first half. But what I mean, just go touch on that midfield partnership, James, because it is quite incredible the the, the turnaround for El Nenny. Um, but also, I don't think any of us contemplated um, that he would start in a game of this magnitude when the other two midfielders might have been fit. Maybe, maybe you did. I, I, I didn't. Yeah. Personally. No, well, I, I, I always thought it's going to be, you know, I think everybody does. You always think it's going to be Granite Xhaka, don't you? You know, you just, you just think it's Granite Xhaka every time that's been his position for what? Four or five years. At, is it four or five years? He's been at Arsenal now. Yeah. He looked so down coming off the bus before the yeah. lineup, by the way. And I yeah. thought that's weird, but go on, Karen. Mm. No. So you, you're just used to seeing Granite Xhaka in there, but it's like you said, El Nenny and party. El Nenny, I think, I think I've seen a few other people say it on um, Twitter, the ones that are actually, you know, cause it's, it's good to praise him now. You know, you've got to remember this, you know, this was, um, you know, this uh, Toot and Carmoon, Danielson in a wig, you know, it's, but now that he's doing well, it's nice to, you know, he's amazing now, isn't he El Nenny? You know, it's amazing, you know, do me a favour, but um, I mean, in uh, fairness, I'm just chatting so, so quickly. I, I, in the start of the season, I, I think the, what I said was I, I didn't believe he'd be playing mm. probably this much. I, I was very for him coming back as, as a squad player after I saw him in one preseason game. I said that yeah. absolutely. I, I felt he was an increase on Gwendoza and Torreira, but but I mm. think this is, might be even a different El Nenny to what we might have seen in the past yeah. games. You know? Yeah, I'm, I mean, for me, he he enables party to do what he needs to do because I think party is like if I go a bit forward and I try and win it high which you know like I said Lacassette was brilliant at it but party was you know we, we've seen him in the last couple of the guy the guy's unreal 
The guy's just a different, different level. And it adds that extra dimension to Arsenal, as well as the Gabriel signing. It just, do you know what I mean? It's like what I said the other week in when Liverpool got Suarez. And I'm I'm not comparing the goal output and everything else because it's silly. They're totally different positions anyway. But Luis Suarez got an extra 10 to 15% out of players that you didn't even think could get a 10 or 15% out of them. You know, Daniel Sturridge has never been the same since. Okay, he's been ravaged with injury, but look at what the look at the level that he got Daniel Sturridge to Suarez playing next to him, Sterling playing next to him. And this is what Partey's doing. Partey's dragging these players that, you know, some of us thought we were he was written off. You know, we looked at El Nenny when he came back, and okay, he had a brilliant loan spell, but none of us really thought he's a first team player. And do you know what? It reminds me of when we went away to City and it was Coquelin and Cazorla. And then all of a sudden, Coquelin and Cazorla become the two. And me as an Aaron Ramsey fan, I was screaming all season going, oh, for God's sake, Aaron Ramsey's never going to get a chance to get back in this. We need Ramsey. We need... And I think now you can't drop them two. Aston Villa next week. I don't want to see Xhaka or Zabayos. I want to see Party and Elneny again. I'm sorry. I'm like... The, the, the interesting thing there, James, is whether... Um, we, we've said he needs to get more of a settled side. So, so I'm, I'm not again, and I, I agree with you. I don't think you can drop them, but it will no. be in theory. Um, to, we'll go back to Man United game. In theory, it, it will be a, a different type of game. It will be that type of game sure. where we're expected to dominate the ball. They'll probably try to hit us like Leicester did on the break. Mm. And the concerns on, or, or some of the concerns, have been, you know, the um, the creativity from that position in an El Nenny. But he really proved, you know, in this game, much more progressive in his passing. Yeah. Always trying to go forward, I felt. N- very, very little sideways passing. And moves the ball a lot quicker than Jack and Ceballos. Whether but, it's more inventive or not is a question. But yeah, but you, you, sum, you summed it up perfectly. It's the mobility, mate. It's the mobility because look at, look at the past couple of weeks. Xhaka for the goal against Leicester. Awful. Sabios as well. Sabios sometimes I'm like, oh, I'll watch him and I'm like, oh, he's going to run at a minute. He's going to run back in a minute. And then I'm like, oh no, that's your top speed. I'm like, oh, oh God. You, do you know what I mean? I've got my head in my hands. I'm like, oh, is that, that's his, that's him. That is him running, James. That is like him running. Like he's running through mud, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but, but, and on party, I mean, it's easier for us to look at this game and say, um, well, that's the partner for party because the last game didn't work. In fairness though, in the last game, it really wasn't a setup that we've ever done before because it was three in midfield where we've always played a two. So at this point, in fairness to Partey, he might be one of those players, a bit like Vieira, that can just play with anyone. When you're that good, you yeah. can play with anyone and you bring them up to your level. I don't know yet. I don't know. Maybe it is El Nenny. Um, I think maybe it's too early to say, but I do agree with you. You cannot drop him yeah. after a the, performance. The thing like I that. liked as well is, is Mikel Arteta went, I like him because he has no ego. And I was just like, ooh. Yeah. I'm like, now who's that a stab at? I was like, is that Sabios and Xhaka being a stabber? But then part of me was like, I think that's for the man who's over in Germany at the moment. Yeah, Gwen Doozy, it, yeah. I'm like, yeah. And he went, I can trust him. He said, when it's high emotion, high level, I can trust him. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, he's a coach's dream. He's very, he's got to be a coach's dream. I mean, he's got to be. But James makes a really good point. We don't have to, we can read out the stats, but I mean, Partey was what, I'm reading it here off Squawker, 100% take-ons, 100% aerial duels, one, 93% pass accuracy, most touches on the pitch. I mean, Neil, he's a player that you've um, long been a huge admirer of, and this was the first time we really got to see him in, you know, the way we play, but in a role that we we kind of expect him in. And it did feel like, you know, this was his arrival moment, really, even though I thought he was fantastic in the Europa League. But, you know, you, you know, you, you want to see how big players play in big games. And um, Neil, he was fantastic. Brilliant. Um, I don't think I could split him or Gabriel for Man of the Match. It's, and, 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 and I think James, uh, I don't know whether he made it off air or on, the, on, on, on here, uh, actually even citing it on many. I think all three of them... Uh, Fantastic, so up there. Couldn't can't really split them, but party for me. You 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 made this point about on Um and could it be that party can play with anyone? Because he's that good, or is it on oh, Nenny's brought something out of him uh, for this particular game? It could be a combination of both. Because for me, um, he was. I think he was bypassed against the game with Leicester. 
uh, Partey. I don't think we utilised him. And I've always said that Arteta's got to play or any manager's got to play their place to their strengths. And I think that's what they, they did very much so. Arteta got it so spot on. Uh, against Man U, but Partey, he's got everything in his repertoire. Absolutely everything. My God, the way he played, it reminded me of, um, and I don't watch these things, but like a, almost like a seasoned skater on an ice rink or a ballerina. And the way that they were just, he was caressing over the whole pitch. He made, it was so silky smooth. He made it all look so easy. Um, and um, I, I know you, you, they're different people and I want him to grow into his own person and create his own legacy. But he so reminds me of Vera already. He really does. Uh, his, his authority, his presence, his power. Um, he can run with the ball. He can, his regains, his tackles, his passing, his distribution. He's even got a shot on him. He's got absolutely everything. Um, he's, he's different. He's just different class. And, um, I think for me, I was happy when I saw El Nenny and, and uh, Partey picked for the lineup because I thought El Nenny would be a great foil for him, absolutely. Because uh, as James touched on earlier, you know, El Nenny can be doing that little bit of uh, the mopping up kind of stuff and part that gives Partey a little bit of freedom to, to move a little bit forward and, 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 and do his thing. And there was one such example of that. I think it might have been the second half where Partey really lost the ball for a moment. And then El Nenny, what he did, he slowed down the two Man United players that were on coming down into an attacking position. And straight away, Partey came back and regained the ball. And for me, it's that kind of thing that reminded me of Vieira and Petit. They used to work very well together, the two of them. And if one made a mistake, the other one would be there to mop up and vice versa. And I really saw that relationship between the two of them. And I, for me, they're undroppable. They, I, I, you know, I like Sapias. I've grown to like Shaka. But for me, at the moment, if that system is working, we can't we can't drop it. We just can't. Uh, it'll be unfair for for I know party's not going to get dropped, but it'll be unfair to drop Hell. That he's he was magnificent. Those last two minutes summed his whole game up in the in you know in, later on in the game. He was his his commitment, and that's what you want to show every young uh, player who's coming through at Arsenal. That's the kind of attitude you want. It's all about attitude for me. And El Nenny had that in abundance. But Partey, he is different kettle of fish he's gonna he's he's the one i wanted and it's proven that he will make a massive difference for us going forward thumbs up to him and and and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more and more of him yeah attempted 14 jewels which was the most in the game won 10 of them and for a midfielder of ours i mean that is el nenny had such a good game but he attempted four jewels and i bet you if you look throughout Jacka and Sabal's game in, game out. I bet you it's no way near the number of 14. So it just shows how um, involved he is and how willing he is to, to just play any part of the game. But but battle. He's willing to battle, battle. Like you said, loses the ball, goes back and wins it. Glides through people like they're not there. I remember in the 10th minute where he just stuck it through Fred's legs and I was like, this... I'm watching Vieira. I'm watching. I'm just. He's just gliding past players, and it's been so long since we've had a midfielder that can literally progress beyond players with the ball. Do you know what I mean? You, it's different winning a tackle and giving it to someone else. But God, have we had that, had that for too long? And it, but it is incredible to think that we're talking about. You know, one of our better, best performances under Arteta, and I do really think for a lot of reasons it was. And. Um, only two months ago, we were talking about our most functional partnership in the midfield for some time with Jacker and Ceballos. I was linking it to, you know, maybe the best since maybe Coquelin Cazorla. And suddenly, you know, we're, we're talking about two completely different players. It, I mean, it's incredible how quickly things can, can move on with a, with a transfer window and a, and, a, and a manager. Do you know what I mean? And, and I know it's just one game and I know we've got to, you know, keep our feet on the ground. But again, looking at United, again, I, I know they're on a terrible run. James mentioned they're on a terrible run. And I, I do believe that the, the, the manager will be sacked before the end of the year, probably. But they did beat Leipzig 5-0 in midweek. Leipzig are top of the German league, or they were in midweek. They might not be now. Um, they're, they're, where were they? Semi-finals in the Champions League last season beat PSG away yeah, I just thought it was, we, we nullified is, them really well they've they've got chatter mate the chatter from them all week just chat 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 and I'm like where are you now I can't find any of them now where are you the, all their phones have been switched off I ain't seen no tweets my whatsapp's quiet I'm like if you look at them if you properly properly look at them they beat 
ugh, they do you know what I mean? They they scraped they scraped past Brighton and they were bragging about it. Let's be fair to Brighton. You know, how'd you castrate a Brighton fan? You kick your sister in the mouth. Do you know what I mean? Bright, bragging about beating Brighton. That but that narrowly. Jog on. They beat they beat Newcastle, who, if you're not beating a Steve Bruce side for however much they've improved, you've got to give up. You've got to give up. And then they beat Oil Barons and they beat bloody Jaeger Bomb FC or whatever they're called, Red Bull Leipzig, whatever it is. And the geezers wearing a jacket. As soon as I saw him wearing that jacket, I knew they were going to get thumped because he looked looked like an absolute idiot. And yeah, you know, they lose to Crystal Palace. They got dominated by Crystal Palace. And yet they got all this bravado for when Arsenal roll in and they completely crumbled. I'm sorry, they crumbled. Look at all their big players. And like you said, dominated in the midfield. They played every central midfielder they have. McTominay was playing. Um, Pogba was playing. Van der Beek come on. Fernandez, And they just, all of them just got outrun and outdominated, like we said. And that's what, that's, do you know what I mean? We normally crumble at Man United. And we always say, we always say, play the team, don't play the badge, Arsenal. Play the team. And do you know what? Yes, do. Yeah, did. yesterday, yesterday we did. We yeah, did, yeah. Yes, and yes, we got we the, and we got the result. So, yeah. I mean, right, you know, yeah, go ahead, Neil. Yeah, I I want to say one thing for the record as well. I mean, I I I like Roy Keane. I actually like him as he's so straightforward. He says what he means. He doesn't mess about. But yesterday, I thought he was unfair, very unfair actually, because he was almost citing. He, they, 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 this is just the typical media. They weren't focusing on Arsenal's win and how well they set up and how well they played and how tactically they got it right, spot on, and outwitted their opposition. All they went on about was how poorly Man United has set up. And only three or four days ago, they were the best thing since Red beating Leisberg or whatever they're called in the, in, the, in the Europa Championship. You know, they were amazing. Rashford comes on, he's done all this great work. And look, hats off to Rashford. I've got a lot of time for him for what he's doing. Uh, but, you know, the way they were lauding him and the rest of the team was like, wow, they're going to end up winning three major trophies this season. And then all of a sudden, because they're outsmarted, oh, they were really poor. Can't really. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Arsenal did all right. But to be honest, look, Man United really didn't give them anything, did they? It's because Arsenal didn't let them play. Because Arsenal outwitted them in every single position, literally on that pitch. We were the better, better team. Look, Leno was quiet apart from a couple of times he wasn't even called into action that's how much he was protected because of the way we played and the way we set up no Man United it wasn't because you were crap it's because Arsenal was so damn superior and I just want yeah. to put that out there sorry yeah but Neil Neil you say that as well there's other sections of the media that I saw and they went oh look at Arsenal having to resort to the dark arts they started kicking they started diving to win a penalty I'm like hang on Hang on. I'm like, you're calling us dark arts when we're playing Man United. I'm like, go watch that go watch that forty ninth game back. You wanna you wanna talk about dark art? I don't want to get to the um sorry. We weren't, to... kick, we weren't kicking nobody yesterday. And exactly. if you think and if you think that Bellerin is a dive, I'm like, goodness gracious me, if that's Fernandez and he doesn't go down like that, they're screwing at him. That's what I because I mean for me, Bellerin, that was that as 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 well as it was well won because that was the only time when Willian actually did take on Luke Shaw like I wanted him to, and he bodied him. That pass completely, and Pogba's playing as a left central midfielder, which God knows why they're doing. <laughs> you know, another thing, Oli don't know what he's doing, why he's playing as a left winger, left central midfielder, and he gives away another penalty. He'd done it against them lot. He'd done it against them lot as well. And yeah, it's superb. Oh, he's superb. <laughs> He's always been defensively lax. Oh, yeah, I know he's yeah, won yeah. World Cups and stuff no, like that, no, but no, no. I actually like it when he's in the team because I'm always like, I'm looking at him and I think, go the other way and he won't chase you. He'll be late on you. He's very clumsy. and um, But it's a, it's a good point in the sense that, um, you know, does that penalty get given with 70,000 um, for fans in the Old Trafford Stadium? I'm not so sure under Mike Dean. Oh, 100% um, a penalty. How could they? How oh, could anyone it's no question. I just think with, the, you know, yeah. the, the, what we know about Old Trafford and what we know... Um, 
we've had to deal with in the past there. Um, it's all obviously irrelevant at this point because of this game. But just to, I do want to touch on a few things in the game. Obviously, Neil touched on Leno. And other than, in the first half, the only thing I remember was was the Greenwood one, which James, you said was a good save. It was a good save with his feet. Very good. Um, but but really, we, we, were, we were on the front foot. We dominated the play. Um, three big chances that I remembered was obviously the Bellerin cross where Orba was sliding in. I do think it was slightly ahead of Aubameyang. But I also do think Aubameyang needs to be chucking himself at that. Like, throw it. It looked like he was almost worried about it in the post or something. Like, just chuck your whole body at that, especially, you know, knowing his, the goal drought he's on. Um, the the, the sack header, obviously, was should have done a lot better. Should have, I mean, no one's near him. He's got to get on target. And I think this is the frustration I had for the first, well, until the goal was um, I just felt it was mimicking a lot of what we saw against Leicester in a way in terms of chance creation felt we were getting into the right positions but we weren't testing the goalkeeper at all and um, I think Saka should have William was a bit unlucky it was a great move 1-2 with a Bamian great move hit the bar um, but unlucky I thought William I wanted him off after 10 minutes and I, I said at half time I think we all did we're usually at half time going who do, who do we bring on and I don't think any of us said anything we were kind of like just leave it as it is, do you know Because I mean? we're actually playing quite well here. So let's not that, jinx that anything. That's really chance as well. You've got to remember a Bamiyang when he's central, he doesn't help create with, for his teammates. Just just want to throw that in there, you know? Yeah, it's a great little laid yeah. back. And I thought a yeah. again, what we want from a Bamiyang is um, to, to be more involved. We, we want him to be more involved. And, and in fairness, I mean, with the front three, we all pick different front threes all the time. This does seem like the front three that Arteta is in favour of this season. I mean, he started in his first game didn't he at Fulham and I think he started it a few more times Lacka's dropped out a little bit like it, like he does but like you said on Lacka's I thought it was one of his better games again I thought his hold up play was very very good um, he looked fitter and sharper obviously he had that chance which I thought he missed but he actually was a great little touch from Lindelof to cause him to miss it but those are the irritating things because I don't look at XG. I didn't even know what XG was until a while ago. Uh, but XG is expected goals. And all season, we've been very low in expected goals because we've not created much. In this game, we were three times Manchester United's XG, 1.09 to 0 0.38. So it just showed that, you know, all the expectation in terms of goal threat came through us. In that, it's, we're, we're still touching on the first half, but um, I just wonder. Um, and James, James, let me get your opinion on it with the front three. It, it does seem he's real reluctant to play a Bamiang centrally, and I am fine with that as long as he is 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 brought into central positions like he was in this game. You know, the, the finish, the, the chance in the second half that just went wide, the, the one where Bellerin's trying to get to it. We need him to be more involved, but it's also about getting the ball to him, isn't it? And threading the ball to him. Yeah, I mean, you, you're spot on there. It's, it's one of those where you've got the guy who's got arguably the best central, you know, forward movement in the league next to, I'd say him and Vardy, I think are the best two in terms of running and got the best movement in the league. And we're not getting him near enough to goal for me. I mean, if you looked at his average position versus Leicester, if you look at the heat map, that guy's playing like right wing back at times. And yeah, he is quite good at it. I will, I will going back to going or, le back, or left wing back from outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he, he, you know, he's working really hard. He works really, really hard. And do you know what? Yesterday, after we watched the first half, a lot of us are thinking, oh, we've had all these chances. They're going to come and steal it. They're going to come and get some at Man United. And do you know what? As, as more and more of that game went on, I thought to myself, Man United aren't going to score regardless. You know, we could, we could come off and they could have empty nets. They're still not going to score. But I always thought we might and that's that for me is progress as well. That for me is genuine, you know, progression in terms of the belief and the confidence. Because the way that we were whipping the balls, like Tierney and Bellerin whipping the balls in yesterday, was unbelievable. They were sens both of them were sensational in terms of whipping those balls in and creating the chances. But yeah, Abamyang, it it's it's showing him more of the ball. Do you know what I mean? It's it's creating that that um you know spells of play for him to do it and i think that yesterday obviously it was the back three but that's in terms of when we've got players coming towards us 
that's when it becomes the five really but then when we're going forward it's it's like it's a four so it's like a hybrid because Saka for me was sort of playing on the left hand side but then he was also like sort of dipping centrally as like a cam and I said the other day that's sort of somewhere where I think I think Saka playing in that hole was like a somewhat number 10 is something that he can do because he can thread the balls in and um yeah it's just it's just getting that little tiny bit of progression and then creating the chances. And, you know, we said it, didn't we? We said, you know, it's times at the moment where where we're getting these one, two or three chances a game. We have to be clinical, otherwise we ain't going to win. And, OK, it's Man United with no fans, but a penalty at Old Trafford, De Gea, for all of his faults, is still one of the best goalkeepers in the league. And I've... I, I looked at I looked at my dad and I went, Dad, do you think he's going to miss this? And he went, Oh, come on, son. He went, Come on, it's a Bamia. And I went, Okay, because I didn't want to. Part of me was like, I don't want to watch this because I had, you know, I had the Spurs game away years um, from the other year in my head and everything else. But yeah, he he smashes it home and you know, leading by example, the captain. I mean, um, we've had three penalties at Old Trafford throughout the history of the Premier League, and Abamyang was the first one to score it. If you remember, Gilberto missed in 06 and then when we won yeah 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 and then uh you know the, the man who shan't be named missed in 2011 didn't he you know so he went oh, yeah. there and yeah he went there with the armband on and he just led by example and do you know what I, people are like well it was a bit of a smash and grab don't care don't care gets gets that monkey off the back like we said and it was do you know what i thought about it sorry to interrupt you Jack, but no, I, I, thought, I thought about it and i, I th- you always think how will we break this unbelievably horrible run that we don't want to speak about and i actually think it was always going to happen this way it was always going to be a one nil slightly nervy um a game in a way because i just feel um and, and if we got that goal earlier, I'm not sure we win it. And I, I just, I just think it had to happen like that. I mean, I actually felt for a long part of the game we got the goal too early. You know, I was going, oh, I wish that was 85th. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I mean? And I was, I was thinking that for a while. I was like, I don't really want to score now because I know if we do, we're going to sit deep, and we'll talk about that. But we did, you know, because you, you're going to get nervous, and that's where I felt the collective needed a bit. I don't have his touches, but Aubameyang had 32 passes yesterday. That's more passes than he had touches against City and Liverpool. He was 27 and 25. So it just shows his involvement. His involvement in, uh, on the ball was so much more. And then, like you said, he's getting into central areas. But I do also want to touch Neil on the right side because we're all big sort of Pepe fans, or we, we at least see the the need for Pepe in this team the way it's in its process if you like of progressing um but a lot of our good attacks and our goal or the penalty if you like came from our right side and i think willian deserves some credit for that i thought it was his best game since the first day of the season he grew into the game after that dodgy first or 10 15 minutes but are we starting to see why maybe arteta sees him as such a vital part of this front three yeah, I mean, I, I was a little bit concerned. I, th- I, I thought he was a bit slow initially. Um, I, I remember there was one really good attack and I just thought he, he, he slowed it right down at the p- pinpoint moment where, you know, he, if he'd done a very quick thinking pass, it could have been a different outcome. Um, but like you said, I think, uh, and I think a lot of the fans saw that, that he grew into the game and, and, and he made his presence felt. And I've always been saying that we... We, we, we kind of focus on the left-hand side too much. Um, we should exploit the right a little bit more. And, and, and in that, I was kind of alluding to Pepe's involvement, but Pepe wasn't featuring. So, and, and yesterday we saw Bellerin and, and, and Willian, you know, command from the right and, and made things happen. And I've got a good credit to Bellerin as well for that. It's not just about Willian. I think Willian, yes, he works very hard. He was involved in in that one two with with the Bamiyang, as you said, uh, and and that was down to a lot of hard work from Lacazette initially, if if, if I remember correctly. Um, but <clears throat> Willian was there; he was there and thereabouts, and 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 like you said, he led to the crucial moment where, again, with Bellerin involved, you know, they they, they got the penalty that we we got the penalty, and 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 fortuitous, fortuitously it was given for a change by Mark Mike Dean. Let me just get that in there get that I love so much um so you know I I, I think it is important that uh, we have those options 
I I do want to see. I still I'll still say even after that performance, personally, I still think Pepe is a player that needs game time, and I don't know how quite he's going to work this. We did see one game where um, he played Pepe and he played Willian, and Willian was interchanging with um, Saka, wasn't he? In that, you know, sort of on the left. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So that could be an option if we ever need that to happen. But I do do have concerns that I'd like to see Pepe feature a little bit more. And I know this wasn't a question about Pepe, and it was about Willian, but I think the fact that we've got, if Arteta's got the options of both now, and both can and and Willian especially can play on both sides if if required. Um, that's only a positive going forward. But I think I think for Willian yesterday that would have done him confidence, you know, to to grow into the game, to make his presence fit, felt. Um, because I I was getting a little bit concerned over with him over the last two three games. Would you say, guys? And we we're thinking, oh, is he a little bit off the pace? Is he a bit slow? Is is it, are these kind of games are the ones where he's not going to show up? Or actually, he did the opposite yesterday. He showed up in a big way. Um, and and I, and I, and it can only be for good uh, good for the club and good for the, the the players around him. So I think I think this is it, it because I felt every single player contributed yesterday. It can only be a good thing going forward because. I keep saying it, confidence uh, and, and, and the infectious uh, uh, kind of effect that has on the rest, of the, the rest of the team and also the squad players, players sitting on the bench, it's, it's going to be a positive. But I think Willian did all right yesterday. I, I, th- I think he's a key player and it will be going forward. Um, but I don't want uh, the curtailment of Pepe as a result of it, though. That's my only concern with it. No, I agree. I, I still think Pepe, um, can, you know, that, that he has, has a place in this first team. And I, I wonder when I'm watching games like this, whether, um, you know, you, you look at the top sides and they have a very settled 11. That's that's what, you know, the top sides generally have a very settled 11. I do sometimes look at it and wonder if Arteta has a different way of playing home to away, whether he thinks of the game differently, um, home and away. And I, I do still think he might think of it differently, right? be more of a counter-attacking team away from home as opposed to at home and that might be where some of the, the changes we might see in in, in the lineup. but I, I personally am, am, am very for him moving towards a more settled first 11-ish but we're going to need the squad Trip players are dropping like flies the se- season six weeks short with the same amount of games you've got the COVID virus as well to add on to that uh, Willian had 15 touches in the final third passes sorry in the final third which was only less than Tierney believe it or not in the final third um so it just shows you know he he, he he was in the getting into the right position there was none of this dropping so deep you know in a false nine or anything like that um i thought that was really fantastic definite penalty like uh, james alluded to i thought better you know he took a step and i was like go down and he you know he went down because we're too honest sometimes right we see this from lacazette and all our players sometimes and when you see stuff like what harry kane's doing in trying to break people's necks and win penalties you think okay at least go down when you've got contact do you know what i mean at least go down when you've got contact and it was really clumsy from pogba it was, it was really good from bellerin you, you know get, we're getting in the box more bellerin i like you said i thought he was fantastic after that I think they started before that. The first best part of Man U's game was probably the first 10 minutes of the second half. I think Maguire had one that just went wide and I was going, we are not, we, we have not come out this half and I, I had Leicester memories, you know, all, all over again. It all felt all too new, didn't it? But, um, but James, Gabriel, we talked about holding. Um, and just to touch on holding again, the, the, how much he's progressed. Uh, he actually was chosen to start against Man City away and then picked up the injury in the warm-up and Luis started. So what he's showing is Holding actually might be first choice here. And we because there was no fitness issue leading into that game, which is quite incredible. And then we talk about the whole Leno Luis partnership and you know, Leno looked great this game again, but didn't have a load to do, but looked great. So that's an interesting one to maybe come back to. But but Gabriel, I thought for me he probably edged it in in terms of man of the match, though I think it's a 50 50 with him and party i just felt second half after the goal i thought he was absolutely fantastic but um james i mean there's not a lot more we can say about him because we lord him every week yeah but um he had his knee heavily strapped i don't know if you noticed um mm. which is i have slight concerns that we're so reliant on a player that's so fresh to the league and still quite young 
But um, I don't want to overstate what a centre back could do for us with our history with centre backs. But um, he, he really does look the real deal at the moment, though, James. Yeah, twenty-seven million quid as well. Do you know what I mean? It's it's. I, I mean, I mean, after watching Party as well, you're looking at him going. Cool, did we get him for too cheap as well? Like forty-five million just for him. And these 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 two players cost less together than what Man United paid for Maguire. And look at the. Do you know what I mean? Look at the lift that they've given us compared to what he's done for them currently. And um, yeah, uh, Gab- Gabriel's just. He's just a silly player, mate. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I, I haven't been more confident with an Arsenal centre back since I would probably say Sol Campbell. I mean, I, I did, I did some, I did used to like watching Vermaelen. I did, I used to really, really love Murtasaka. I did sort of like Koscielny, but you always knew them guys. They're going to give a penalty away, or they're going to do something. They're going to have a lapse, and at the moment, and he's still new to the league. Gabriel ain't having no lapses. Gabriel ain't having a time where I'm like, oh, you, you, do you know what I mean? Like, why have you done that? And do you know what we keep saying? We, you know, we do laud him and praise him, but the majority of the time we're quiet about him because we don't have to be loud about him. You don't have to, you don't have to speak about him because he ain't doing nothing wrong. And that is the best thing for me being an Arsenal. I mean, we got the best defence in the league. When was the last time Arsenal had the best defence in the league? You got you guys have got to tell me because I don't remember. I normally remember everything. I don't remember an Arsenal side. <sighs> I know it's it's seven goal conceded in seven games. Yeah. Um, yeah. which obviously Villa had their you know, that, and we've got Villa next. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, I think it's the two best defensive records, or maybe Liverpool's just ahead of them now. I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, quite, but this was only the second clean sheet we've kept all season as well, which was mm. the other one was against well, Fulham at the but, end as well. Like, and because he was on the booking, like we kept saying. Um, the tackle on Matic and the way he's like, he's doing all that with his hands. Watch it. Watch it. I'm like, mate, jog. I hated that. You know, he won the ball. You know he won the ball. I hated like, that. I'm like, you're a melt, mate. I'm like, you're an absolute melt. Do you know what I mean? Like, jog. That on. was the one where he slid in. He slid yeah. in in the area. I mean, I mean, what, what, what amazing tackle to go to ground when you're on a booking and in the penalty area that late on. Well, that's, I mean, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying, Jack. The brass of the guy. Like, do you know, I t- I've said it before. I'm like, I, w- I want to see bollocks from this Arsenal team. And that guy, that guy's got it in abundance. That guy's, I mean, he's, he's got so much he can give it to other people. I'm like, spread, spread it along. And um, yeah, just, you know, it, it, it's a case of if Partey or Elneny, if that's the partnership going forward, do lose the ball somehow when they are transitioning and, we, and you know, Bellerin and Tierney are bombing on. That guy's back there. So that, do you know what I mean? That guy, that guy might mop. He'll mop it up. He'll mop it up. Do you know what I mean? We got these guys that just mop up every single thing, and yeah, I can't. I can't speak any. Yeah, more. And, and he's also he's, for, he's, for Arsenal to have that. Is we've wanted defensive, you know, a solid defence for a decade, a decade, and seven, yeah. seven games. He's played with three different partners already. And again, like we said, you know, if the player's that good, mm. um, you, you don't worry about who their partner is as much because yeah. they're that good. Do you know what I mean? And um, I mean, Thursday, rotate it, drop him out, drop him out because oh, he shouldn't you know, be in the squad. Yeah, we, yeah, but we, we we don't yeah we don't need him on Thursday. I mean, Thursday for me, still still go for it because if we win that game, we've pretty much won that group already. I do Mustafi, Mustafi and Kalashnik again, mate. Um, to be yeah. honest, well, if I, he's back, if he's back, I'd do Mustafi Louise. Yeah, or Mustafi Luis, exactly. Yeah, yeah of course. Or you, um, you do, or you do all three, and then go Cedric Niles again. Yeah, 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 exactly. You go match Mustafi Luis. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's at home, I think. So yeah, we'll, we'll get to that oh, game. It home? We'll, I, I thought I, it was in Norway. I, no, I think this one's at home. There I'll double go. check. Come on, sure. can I, I can go on, just say sorry? Sorry. So seven goals, right? And think about who we played. Yeah, seven goals, we played. and we played United, City, Liverpool away, and Leicester at home. And three, if, if if not four, of those teams uh, can score very freely, and they can, especially to Liverpool and City, they were banging in goals for fun over the last two three seasons, and we played all four of those teams and let in seven goals, and yeah. that is what I was saying. Arteta has re- started to rebuild this process 
from starting from the back. You always start. I saw George Graham did. You say he got the defence right first, and then he started moving forward. And now he's done the defence. He's done the midfield. And I think if if we've got, if we've got any concerns, it's just that little bit, maybe that slight spark missing at the at the front. So once we've got that, that sorted, and once yeah. Exactly. That, yeah. Once we've got that sorted, I'd rather get everything right from the back going forward because that's the way a team should be built. The foundation's built first, and then you then you then you move out forward and you create that creativity, etc. And I just feel that Arteta is doing this in the right way. He's he's got he's got this process going. He has said it's going to be progressive. There are going to be ups and downs. We're going to have a few more downs. Don't get me wrong. There are going to be a few more downs. We think, oh, God, what's he doing? And why has he done that? But I just feel that he's got a vision and he's building to something. We can see where he's going. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. As before, under Emery, we had no clue. We didn't have no direction. And he is creating this identity. Touching, touching Once on what we you get that as well, though, on Neil, the games that we have played, we haven't been dominated I've been upset and I've been angry, but we haven't been dominated. And if you look, Man United, they had the neighbours go up there. They done them six. They tonked them. City play Leicester, five, tonked them. For us, it's that same old... And it's it, it, if we lose to sensational play, someone doing something like that, you go, oh, yeah, but at the end of the day, look at that. And it's, again, it's us. It's us causing mistakes. Look at the Liverpool game. If he doesn't parry it towards Mane, Leno, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to dig him out because I said yesterday he was brilliant, but it's our mistakes, you know, Leno parrying it to Sterling. And then Leicester, Mustafi's 10 yards forward than he should be. Xhaka was too bad recovering. And it, it, it's not that these teams are absolutely smashing us to bits like we normally used to get smashed to bits. It's that we're still having these lapses in concentration that are just and I'm and like you said, Neil. Yeah, we're shoring it up. And if we stop the silly mistakes, we got a real, we got a real. I don't want to say a real great chance because I don't think we're going to win the league. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Neil, if that upsets you. But that top four now, I thought it was a write-off a couple of weeks ago, and now it's really. Do you know what I mean? Going into that Villa game, we win that. Go into this international break wrap them all up in cotton wool so none of them get injured when we come back. And then we got Leeds, Wolves, and then the neighbours and everything. And I'm like, that's another good little run there where, you know, if we can just keep keep it calm, keep it steady, and create a little bit more and take the chances more, we got a real good chance now. Like, like you, I think you messaged me last night, um, Jack, and you went, James, it's all become open again. It's all become open again. It's so hard to it's judge. Four, it's four points, isn't it? Yeah. Four, yeah. It, it's so hard what I looked at it. And it's so hard to judge at this point because of, one, it's so early, but also who you've played. I mean, let's just talk about the lot, if you want, just an example, the lot down the road. I mean, they played, other than United, they've not played anyone that was part of the, the, the top six last season, I don't believe. And when they played United, United went down to 10 men wrongly, went down to 10 men at 1-1. So I'm, I'm, you know, just a, just a caveat that they, you know, they, they really haven't played anyone. You say the same for Chelsea. Chelsea played United away. They haven't played anyone else. So on the same points as them, but they haven't played United, City, Liverpool away like we have, and and Leicester as well. If you want to include Leicester in that as well, who were part of the top six. So we definitely had the harder harder running in terms of games. And now, you know, you could lose to anyone and, you know, the league's tough and there's no real easy games, but it's such a hard point to judge. What was really important here, I felt, was, um, that, well, to, 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 to get points from the games that you want to get through is important, otherwise you're not really getting through them. You know, people say, oh, I've got that one out of the way. And I was like, well, hold on, we haven't got any points from it. So you, you want to get points from those games. But also, I do think it was maybe the biggest, and we're not through it yet, but, but maybe one of the bigger tests for Arteta's managerial career so far, you know, where probably a lot of question marks were coming towards him, the way we were playing plus the results, right? And um, it was beyond the honeymoon period there. So it was really important. And I think it just shows the belief of the squad to go to a place like this, irrespective of where they're in in their moment. 
I thought it was really good. And you've got to remember, I mean, you talk about our strengths and our weaknesses. I feel Man U's strengths is certainly in their forward line. I know Martial was still suspended, but in Rashford and, and Greenwood, they're just full of pace and full of electricity. And we saw Rashford and how good he can be. And Greenwood is a terrific youngster, right? I put him up there, you know, right up there with, with, with Saka and, the, and, and, and these guys, you know, I just think, you know, terrific. And we kept them just not, it wasn't like we got luck, just quiet. Just, they were, dead quiet I, I, I don't recall anything other than the Greenwood half chance in the first half from the from the angle and I think the one that went on to the bar was a deflection off Elneny that hit Leno's head and then hit the post so really again nothing other than that all I re remember is the Maguire header so we just we, we're, we're, we're defending well but we're also not giving up stupid chances we're not giving up to I think they had seven shots on goal maybe but I don't only, I don't remember the other three or four were speculative I presume so really really good to see a performance like that where we, we concede very very little chances and, and we get a result at the other end um, just a terrific performance is there anything Neil you want to add on the performance before I hit some fans questions to us on on players I think you said maybe Partey ed edged it for you but you said Partey on any or Gabriel you could take your pick um, is there anything that you, that you want to add I thought after the penalty just because we haven't really touched on after the penalty we did sit a bit deeper was that always going to happen with the with the amount of the time it's been since a win like this I think so I think then they're, they're really human and, and so there was going to be a few nerves I think Arteta had made a point that he didn't let, let any or the team know the 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 history of when we last won at Old Trafford I think he said that in some some interview that he didn't he didn't mention it because he didn't want to had that kind of mindset. Um, obviously, the players that knew knew, but the rest of them, maybe the parties of the world, maybe Gabriel, they don't know that it's been 14 years or whatever since since we we won at Old Trafford. And I think that was a good way to do it um, because you know that that it, it just creates a different mindset, I believe, psychologically. So, but I, I think it's just only like human nature that you know you're going to be nervous. You're, you're away. You're, oh, at the end of the day, it's Old Trafford away. It's still a difficult fixture. You know, it doesn't matter how. What 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 stage or what era you're looking at, Man United? It's still a different, difficult fixture to go away at Old Trafford. I know there's no fans, but it's still away at Old Trafford, and and it's not easy. And then you know to hold on to a lead, you know for 15 minutes or whatever it was after scoring at Old Trafford. It's not it's not the easiest, especially when you have got Mike Dean officiating. Um, and 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 I, and I just feel that you know we, there was going to be a few nerves. We're going to lose a little bit of shape. Um, and we're just going to be focused on just trying to keep them out. But like you said, apart from the the, the, the Greenwood chance, the Maguire, uh, and that and then that funny bit bit where we were a little bit fortuitous, it hit on any and let off Leno's head and onto the post. I don't remember anything either. We kept them quiet. We kept Rashford, who'd scored an amazing hat trick, quiet. Um, and, and the Greenwood uh, chance was because of a Rashford's great pass. It was, it was a brilliant, brilliant ball to ball to him. And then after that. They were nullified, completely nullified them, and and for me that is a great testament to every single player on the pitch. That's all I wanted to add. But I still do. I, I know I mentioned it earlier, but El Nenny in the last two minutes, oh my god, you know the way he was running to stop them, to stifle them from creating anything in that you know that last gasp, you know last minute goal, and for him to come on and show everyone across the world. Now, that's how you play football. Remember, I've always said you play from the first second to the last second, no matter if it's 98 minutes, 95 minutes, 91 minutes, Fergie time, it doesn't matter. You keep concentrating right till the end. And that's what he showed. And I just want to give him the last say that El Nenny was, for me, stand out. Party and Gabriel were exemplary, but El Nenny did something special for me. It's fantastic, Jack. Brilliant. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I thought he was, you know, definitely surprising in a sense and um, really good to see. I think we lost. Oh, Neil's back on the camera. Sorry, I thought his camera switched for a second. Um, some good fans questions and comments. A lot of people saying they can't wait to listen to this one. Sean Minto, um, uh, Bernadette, um, who else? Mike Gannon, looking forward to listening to it. So thanks for that, guys. And, and some people getting questions in. Um, Mike, is it... Is it true for the first time in a while, James? Sorry, um, um, this is at Melvin Marks, top man. Is it true to say for the first time in a while, the area we may need to improve in is our forward line? Yeah. Yeah, I I think I think it's just you've got, you've got to give them the ball more. 
you know what I mean? You got a, It's like I said earlier, we got the guy with arguably the best movement in the Prem. But he's, you know, like I said, if you look at his expected position and the heat map and everything else, he's too far away from the action. And when he does get involved, um, albeit centrally, that's when he's that's when he comes alive. Like if that Willian one didn't hit the bar and it went in, because you looked at De Gea's face, he looked like, oh crap. He's like, I've, yeah, I've been done there. He looked like he'd been done. And he was like, thank God that hit the bar. That's one of the best goals of the season. And I'm not, I'm not saying that just because I'm being biased and I'm an Arsenal fan. The way Lacassette wins that high, goes to Willian, Willian to Aubameyang, back, side foot. It's a really good move. And I've always said the speed kills. And I know that Willian isn't as fast as, as Pepe is. And I know I'm a huge, huge, huge Pepe fan. But Willian, for me, done enough there to go, OK, you keep your place then. That On that performance, I'm like, OK, for Villa, you keep your place. And it's just, it's just we've got to be a bit more zippy, a bit more quick on the break and everything else. But I think, I think we'll get there. I think we will get there. And I've, I said it a couple of weeks ago, and I'm sticking by it. Eventually, someone's getting a hiding from us. And I don't know when it's going to be, and I don't know who it's going to be. But we'll have a game where we'll get about five or six, and then we'll go, there it is. There it is. And we talked on it earlier, Saka having the most shots. He's getting in the positions. If he works on his end product, I think the header, he was so surprised that he won it considering he had Maguire next to him. You know, he never thought that he was going to outjump him. So that's maybe what took him by surprise. And then obviously it went over, but we're, we're getting in the positions and it's, it's just being more clinical as well. Cause like we said, if, if we're not scoring one of these, you know, this, when we're creating three or four a game, if we're not scoring and we're not winning, but the numbers going up. And like I said, the goals, the goals will eventually go up. We, Aubameyang, Although he was on a he's on a small drought and everything else or whatever you want to call it, the guy's too good, mate. The guy the guy's too good. He's too good. And if Lacassette's numbers aren't that high, it's it's the work rate. Do you know what I mean? He, he'll set them up for others. If he doesn't work, I'm still standing by my Eddie and Ketty. Or I ain't letting Eddie. I'm not having the Eddie slander, mate. I'm not having it. <laughs> you should have done better yesterday. Well, my brother done. calls him ball dick off. <laughs> <laughs> He says he won't come and pull Dick off. Who's he going to foul now? No, Um, he he, he should have done better yesterday when he, okay, he was running it towards the, I was like, mate, run towards the goal and score. Run towards yeah. the goals because they weren't going to catch him. They yeah, but then I think him, Niles but... took over and did all yeah, right, got yeah, throw yeah, it or yeah, something. Nah, bless him. Yeah, but, um, but, but I no, agree with you on that. Foul come Christmas, come Christmas, Neil's man's back. Yeah, you know, I, just I agree with you on that. And Melvin, just to t- I, I, I'm happy with our options. I think it's just finding the balance of those options and and then sticking with that. You know, so 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 it, it was encouraging to see what we saw from those three, William Lacker and all, but and because it's been so hit and miss in terms of what we can create, but also the front three really clicking, like you said, why change that at this point? So it's about just finding the balance, Melvin, but I definitely think we've got the options there. You know, you can't get people like Reese Nelson in the squad. Um, so, you know, who had a great game in midweek, felt a bit for him and Joe Willock a little bit. They couldn't make numbers into the squad. So it's just showing the... Um, the sort of depth that we that we have there, you know, and then and then Saka's not really even in the front three, and then we've got a seventy-two million pound man on the bench, you know, all this kind of stuff. But um, um, will at the warm boom, I think we've kind of answered it, but I definitely want to re- read it out. Thoughts on El Nenny lads? Is he the midfield partner to get the best out of Partey early doors, but seems to facilitate him really, really well? And just how good was Partey to watch? Um, Neil, you loved the partnership even when it was announced. Did you love it because you think like? Like, um, believe that it's like a long-term option, or was it specifically for for this type of game? No, I don't know. I, th- I think I was just looking. For, I'm just taking one game at a time, and that, I just I just thought that uh, for me, I just thought because we know El Nani to be quite a tidy player. Um, yeah, he may not have been the most creative and influential and enterprising player, but he was a tidy player. And I thought now he's got someone in in the likes of Partey which he can be a perfect foil for. This, this is, that's all I just thought. It was a very quick kind of instinctive reaction. And I saw it, and I, I know you guys are a little bit concerned, but I thought 
No, I, I don't think so, because I think the performances of, of El Nino, what we've seen in the last few weeks, I thought merited that inclusion into the team. And I just thought he will work well with Partey. It's just something something inside me just said it. And and I and as I said, I thought Partey was very much underutilised against Le- Le- Leicester. And I thought with, with El Nino and just the two of them in midfield, I think it, we could be looking at something very, very different. And it proved, and it worked out, you know, thankfully it worked out. And I'm not saying it's the, the option going forward for the rest of the season, but, uh, but, I, but I think it's definitely now one that's going to put thoughts into Arteta's mind and he can fall back on it if, if other, other sort of formations or partnerships don't work. But certainly they both deserve to be in the next premiership game. I think we'll see it completely. I think the, the, the Willicks and the Nelsons will feature on Thursday for sure. I mean, they deserve it. I, I think he's not going to change much from, from the last game in Europe. I think he's going to keep to it. So I think we'll see, I think certainly this weekend, I'll be shocked if I don't see on any party again for Villa. Yeah. Um, I, I will be shocked. Play, but, play but, Jack as a boss midweek. Yeah, possibly, <laughs> possibly. But where does, it's true though, where does that leave Sabahis and Jack? I mean, to be honest, Shaka was our most con- kind of consistent player since, you know, his, his outrage in, in, in that game where, you know, he was almost going to walk out the club. And let's be fair, he turned it around. He'd done a massive U-turn. We've all said it. So where does that leave him um, for the moment? I don't know. But we we have got to play as for the club. We've got to play for the club, not for the players. And I'm sorry, if you've got players that are doing better, doesn't matter what you've done before, you have to sacrifice them. I'm really sorry. Because no, we, we're ambitious. You've got to, to utilise the squad, lads. Yeah. We've got, play we're to your strengths. I've always said play to your strengths. Look, look, we're going to have a lot of games. And I we, mean, have, we have now got somewhat of a squad. Use it. Yeah. Use I it. mean, look, look. these two players, whoever the two you want to say, um, last season were, were Guendouzi and Torreira. And one was not featuring because he wasn't really an Arteta player in Torreira. And the other was just being a being a donut but really wasn't featuring under Arteta anyway he started 4 and 14 before he became a donut so like do you know what we've got here is two players that thought they, they maybe their, their positions were nailed on sitting on the bench with 90 minutes at Old Trafford going how am I getting back into this team and that is fantastic in, the, in that sense you know and and, and 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 he's brought those players on that the, those guys that are sitting on the bench so they're with him they are with him they, they are part of it and um, so that they're all going to play their part I think but um, and it's like you said I think the competition level has gone up and that can only mean good things for performances I think so um, strangely um, Ash Gallagher Ash underscore Gallagher top man always sends in his questions strangely a more defensive setup with a free at the back again I, we said it's you know it's really hard to judge the formation but Ash felt it was a free at the back um, with probably left, Saka at left wing back does he feel that creates um, a greater attack in play than the back four has should we just accept a 3-4-3 three, three formation um, to get the most out of this playing group thus using this going forward well, I think it's really hard to judge the formation now, to be honest. I don't think we sit naturally in a free constantly in these away games like we did before. I didn't feel we were doing it much totally against City, even though we weren't creating a hell of a lot. I didn't feel we did it for too much in this game. Though, if you want to see it as a free as Tierney as that left centre-back, um, possibly without the ball, it certainly maybe looks like that where Saka drops in deeper. But, um, Ash, I'm not sure. I feel like, I feel like Arteta's very, very... Um, What's the word? Um, it, 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 no, changeable in terms of his lineup um, formation as it switches throughout. I think what's really key is um, him getting to a settled eleven. I think that's what's really key for me. Is is so everyone understands their roles within the three four three or transition into a sort of a four two three one. The way whichever way we're going with it. So I think it's harder to evaluate the formation because I see a lot of transitions and changes I think anyway but um, I would definitely say trying to get to a more settled 11 for, for those sort of Premier League games obviously understand that Europe is going to be different and um, I think it's going to be really really important just because I think a lot of these players need to gel um, together you know I think each game in game out is going to really help them I think we did have no nope, Sean just just mentioned a comment on um, how in, how great some players were so let's do some predictions for midweek boys and a villa because I, I might not do a post uh, midweek one it's not because I don't care about midweek it's because my whole work schedule changes of course do care um, so we didn't do a midweek up after, after the free deal victory in the Europa League um, pretty standard Dundalk weren't really up to up to much fantastic goal by Pepe 
and Pepe can probably feel a little bit aggrieved and probably Nelson and Willock to a certain extent to not be involved at all in this game. But it really wasn't one of those games where you could change it after this. It was very cagey, wasn't it? So I can understand Arteta's changes. And in the end, they were kind of, what was it like for like, who did he bring on? He brought on Eddie for Laka, which is the typical change because Laka's legs go. Um, he brought on Mustafi, but I have no, I cannot remember who he brought him on for. I Oh, for a Bamiyang, which was interesting. We were really shutting up shop at that point, weren't we? And um, what was really interesting was Xhaka was changed out and he was it had reported to the bench that he was coming on for Partey and he stopped it. He stopped the whole thing. And I was I, I was going, what? Because Partey didn't look tired one bit. Looked like he was ready to go for another 90 minutes, to be honest. And I did not want to change that midfield too, no matter what. So I was really happy he didn't change that. And I know we sat deeper and it was a bit nervy and biting nails that, but he got it spot on from start to finish, I thought. So really good. But um, James, midweek obviously should be wholesale changes midweek. So what's your predictions for that? And give me your predictions for Villa as well before I go to nil. Yeah, so yeah, I think I think change it on um on Thursday. Um bring bring Nelson back in, bring Pepe back in, and Ketia to start. Willock back in. Um I, I would probably start Xhaka. I feel bad for Sabios, but yeah, I'd put I'd put Xhaka and Willock in the middle. Um and then I um score line, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go three one uh, midweek. And I will. They're not bad, are they, Mold? They're 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 a decent side. I've heard. All I know, I don't know much about them, but all I know is apparently up front they've got another new Harland, and he's meant to be he's meant to be coming on the scene. And I can't I don't know I can't remember what the geezer's name is, but apparently he's only about eighteen or so, and he's already six foot six, and you know he's another Ivan Drago drug, type. Drug test him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And apparently he's meant to be tasty. So this is um. This is only going to socialise the old team, isn't yeah, it? They used to manage, yeah. 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 So, but no, I'm I'm going to go three one, and I'm 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 gonna. I think a safe bet's Pepe. I think I think Pepe is going to be a safe bet. Yeah, he'll start one. for sure. And then Villa. Um, I wouldn't change the side that played today. Uh, yesterday, sorry, I'd keep the same team for Villa. Same um, team. I know that I know that it's at home, and maybe you want to be a bit more flashy and everything else. But Villa are very very good on the counter. And I think the recovery speed of El Nenny with Partey, and plus I think Partey can break them through the middle, and they give away a lot of these fouls. Look at them yesterday, the two free kicks, silly fouls, and then they whipped it in. So, yeah, for that game, I'm going to go 2-1, because I, I do rate Villa, actually. I think I think um, they're not, not a bad team now, especially this season. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go 2-1, and I'm going to go for Willian in that game. I think maybe he might hit a free kick that game. Free kick, Willian. I'll take a win there, mate, because Villa had a really good start to mm. the season. And I mean, this Martinez was absolute rubbish yesterday. Was he, he was, was he was he at fault? Someone yeah. I read someone saying he wasn't at fault for any of the goals, but you felt he was a bit dodgy. Yeah, I, I, did, I didn't think he had the best of games, and um, you and he was watched, a little bit dodgy against Leeds, wasn't he? He'll become booth on reincarnate. Yeah, oh, he's going to be well <laughs> up for Sunday. that game. He's going to yeah. be well up for it. So, so okay, we're going um, three one and two one. Um, Neil, what, what are your thoughts on the two games? I, th- I think um, I think I said it a bit earlier. I think was, the changes. Yeah, make whole sort of changes, but make it the same as the last European fixture for Thursday. I can't see any differences really. Just keep it the same. Um, and uh, does that mean Shaq is going to become a European and FA Cup player? Who knows? Uh, but we'll see. Um, and uh, for that game, I, I'll go. I'll just go diff- just be, to be different. I think three one's probably about about right, but I'll go four one just to be a bit different. Uh, so four one, and I will say um, Pepe. I hope he. I, I hope he has an amazing game. I hope he gives Arteta serious headaches for the Premiership um, for selections. I, I, I think. Yeah. But you know, Nelson and Willock really did play well as well last week. So so good. Oh yeah, so they nice to their see starts that. for sure. Yeah, they'll both but, start yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, they'll do. Yeah, I'm, I, I just. Um, it's just, just, just. It's, it's great to have all this selection, eh? To yeah. have a completely different team and- for Europe. Told you know. that your boy, um, told that your boy Smith Rowe will be fit for this Thursday's oh, game. So hopefully wow. we see him maybe for thirty minutes. I hope so. Know, be nice to see him come on if we're comfortable in the game. So um, Ooh, and let's, let's not let's not forget Balogun. 
he made an appearance finally. Of course, yeah, for all and He looks all right. He looks, he looks all right. He, he interests he? me. He does interest me. I wonder if he's another player mm. that Arteta might be able to do a little U-turn with if he's involving him a little bit more. I yeah. personally, I know Eddie's not got a ton of minutes, but I wouldn't be against him starting Balogun just because um, I, I'm just, just curious. I'm curious about watching him. Yeah. You know, but I know he played in the under twenty threes. I think the day after oh, that game. Oh, so yeah, I don't know if there's an under twenty three game coming up. Maybe he's not as involved, but be nice to see him. Maybe for a little longer, at least, maybe thirty or forty yeah. minutes, just to have I a agree. look at him. Um, and like you said, I, I do think I know these Europa League games sometimes can be hard to kind of get up for. But you look at how Spurs did. Um, sorry, Mike. Um, if you look at how they did a midweek, and what you don't want in it is um, to have to put a really strong liner out. For, for, for six games what you'd love to do is for those last two games go I'm going to play Balogun for 90 I'm going to play Smith Rowe for 90 I'm going to play you know uh, if he's not involved in the group but you could play like the likes of Saliba if he was and you know and, and just, just give him 90 if we, if yeah, we win I'm this though, we've won we've won the group haven't we if we win this well I don't know if he's playing much other, nine points is um, all I think nine points means you're qualified pretty much yeah. ish but 10 points in the Champions League was always kind of the cut off where always. you need to be. Mm. So obviously you still need something, but <clears throat> win this one and you can, you can relax a little bit more, I would say. Yeah, at least. So, um, did I ask for your Villa one nil as well? No, not yet. Um, Go Villa, ahead. I think, I think again, I would echo James, I think keep it as it was, uh, for, for Man U. Don't see why we should mess around with it. It worked got it spot on and um, I'm going to be a little bit more cagier than normal I'm going to go for a 1-0 I'm yeah. going to go for another 1-0 I think it's going to be a tough game it's and I think it will be got to win I, it I'll, yeah I think it will be a tough game I think we could I think Emmy will be up for it for sure I, I really do so I think he's going to make some good saves and I shouldn't yeah. you know hopefully he won't but um, uh, I think he will so I think it will be a tight game and I think it will be um uh, Let's go for Saka. The difference. Saka, yeah. So Saka, don't, one nil. Yeah. Don't want him in the squad midweek. Don't want um, no, no, Gabriel no, no. in the squad midweek. There's no need in it now. They're no, definitely no. Chris, just keep him away. Um, keep Warbur away. Keep Partey away. Don't don't doesn't need it. I mean, Partey clearly, you know, the, the, you know, best thing since sliced bread. So just keep him away. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll go. Um, I'll go two nil midweek. I'm going to say Pepe as well. It's so hard, isn't it, with Pepe? Because you, you really, really want him to work out. I think there's a large portion of fans that just like really, really want that signing to work out, and and we're trying to sort of see him filter back into the first team. And on Saturday's, uh, sorry, Sunday's team, I think I probably agree with you. Um, I just wonder how I think what did we have? I think we had 47% possession in this game because we dropped off the last 20 minutes. But the expectancy would be for us to have a lot more of the ball. Um, I, I agree on the old any part because I, I, I do worry about recovery speed and I think that might be a really intelligent thing to do with their sort of pace going forward Grealish and, and these guys moving forward and they've got that Ollie Watkins haven't they um, going forward so, so I agree with that um, I, I do wonder in the, in the front three whether he decides to change it though you know whether he decides to look at the Sheffield United game and think maybe we need just 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 more players that feed between the lines if they're sitting so far deep is lack of going to be irrelevant in, 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 in the dropping deep role I hope he keeps it the same I like to see Lacquer closer to the goal to be honest I think he's quite an underrated finisher when he gets chances he just doesn't get that many though he's had a few clangers this season so I'm going to go um yeah, I think it's going to be tight. I'll probably go 2-1 as well. I think James said 2-1. Um, I think I'll go 2-1. We've got to win it. We've got to win it. Um, I'll say 2-1 at Bamiyang. I'm hoping this sort of kick starts his goal-scoring uh, season. Fingers crossed. And I'll tell you what, if we win that one, we are... We are we are in we are proper in the mix, aren't we? So so win that, and, we, and, and we're really in the mix. And with some big games um, played already in the early portion of the season, um, so that'd be huge. You got but, you got the three hardest away out of the way now, for me. Yeah, the three come... hardest away games that we've that we're going to have, and we've had them early. So we shouldn't be nervous going away to anybody now. No, they've all come opinion, to us. In my opinion, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've all come to us. So we got to make sure we get, like I said, get the settled eleven um, way of playing. Love the way we were creating more in this game. Just 
got to hit the target more. Just have shooting practice for three days. Hit the target. Just keep hitting the target. Even if it's straight the goalkeeper, I'd just like to see us hit the target, to be honest. But um, I know you got to, you, know, you got to aim and precise, but it's, it's frustrating sometimes that we don't get these these chances, that good chances on, on, on target. You've got to test the goalkeeper, haven't you? So, um, boys, it's been great. We're on YouTube. Um, subscribe to us we're on Twitter um, at Purely Arsenal FP. Get your questions in. We'll be back definitely after the video game, if not before. Neil, James, thanks so much. Have a good week. Thank good you, uh, work. Take care, mate. Great win. Thanks, guys. Thank you, boys. Up Come on, Arsenal. Come on, boys.